Coach, uh, obviously it's probably pretty early to be thinking about, I guess, naming a starter, but more in terms of the guys that you have at the quarterback position that could fill that role. How do you handle it when it's guys who have starting experience, or guys just coming in who could fill that position? Where do you, how do you kind of handle that whole thing? Yeah, I think the most important thing is just the communication has to be up front. And we've been that with uh, even in the communication with Tyler when we talked about and recruiting him and bringing him here. Just being really good communicators about what the guys expect, the expectations of the competition, um, the repetitions, and, and, and really to, to explain to them this job is not one um, on one really good practice. It's not one on two really good practices. It's a consistent uh, measuring tool over the course of spring and probably into summer. Um, and, and then you'd like to have it nailed down by the start of fall camp. But um, just really excited um, about the group. I mean, the, the guys that we have in our room, um, Henry Columbia's done a really nice job of picking up the offense, and he has practiced like a, a, a guy that's played a lot of games in the Big 12 with a lot of poise. He's been very efficient with the football. Um, Donovan Smith, the younger guy coming off a, a shoulder operation, um, has, has, been, has been a really bright spot. Um, Barron's throwing the ball around really well. Um, Maverick MacGyver, um, being able to get him some reps here early on in spring camp. Um, and then you have Tyler who came in two practices ago and, and you wouldn't have thought that he had missed a whole lot of time in terms of his knowledge of the offense um, and just he looked very comfortable out on the field. So um, the room, the talent in the room uh, has been significantly upgraded. Um, I, I walked into a pretty good situation from that standpoint. I uh, have been really excited about how competitive these guys have been. And I think the communication, um, the expectations of, of what this position entails and, and, and how we're going to grade that position, I think, is the biggest thing. And, 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 and have those conversations with all of them in the room. I go to Sam. Hey, Sonny, when it comes to Henry and Tyler, the experience, the game experience they have, how much, how evident is that as you see them out there on the field right now? And how much does that help them? Uh, it's just a calmness. I think a calmness with both of these guys, um, and they're able to weather um, a few bad plays, maybe a bad period in practice early on, and just know, hey, this is a long practice. These are long games. There's a lot of plays left, and so I think that's the biggest thing. And I, I talked to the, to all of them in the room about is 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 there's everyone has their strengths and weaknesses at quarterback. Um, you, some guys' um, skill sets they're all unique. Um, uh, but I, I think that they can all learn from each other. And that's what I try to point out about Tyler and then Henry is these guys have experience and, and that, that is to their advantage. Um, what they do with it, it's up to them and how they use that advantage is up to them. Um, and, and up to this point, they've done a nice job of it. But you can definitely tell there's, there's never any panic. Um, there's just a real calmness about their demeanor out on the field. And offensively, how much has, have you evolved or how much different is – what you do from what it was the last time you were in love. Um, you know, I, I would say, you know, offenses are, are always evolving, um, and, and it's the same with defenses. Um, le defenses in this league are really good. They're very well coached. Um, guys uh, play with a lot of speed on the field, and, and so I think you just have to try to stay ahead of the curve on offense also. And so there's going to be some similarities to what we did um, previously when I was a player, whenever I was here coaching with, um, with Neil and, and with Coach Kingsbury. And there's also some things that we've evolved to that we feel like with our personnel and our, the skill set that we have here that um, will give our guys a chance to be successful and the quarterback's a big part of that what can he do go to ryan all right we'll go to jared hey coach how you doing doing well jared how are you doing good i have a couple of questions uh first off this is kind of just philosophically what do you look for in a quarterback in your room and then also on the recruiting trail i think the first thing is is he a winner um, does he win, win football games? That's one of the things I noticed about Donovan Smith whenever I was recruiting. Um, I came by friendship the, sp the spring before he got there. And I watched them practice, and then and then the season they had when he got there. Um, I think that says a lot about the type of a quarterback that he is. He's a winner, um, and so I think that's the number one thing: accuracy, arm strength. Um, you know, I think coachability, and, and I think is he is he a player that? And this is so hard when you're not out um, because of COVID, but you, you you watch and see how does he relate to teammates. Um, is he a guy that, that they, they gravitate towards, or is he a guy that is standoffish um, and, and, and stand alone? And so I think those are intangibles 
you know, and those are things that you get from watching games, from watching practice. Um, you know, is he smart with the football? You can measure that with touchdowns, the interceptions, you know, completion percentage. I think one of the things, completion percentage on third downs and in the red zone, um, I think those are really important things that separate guys when you're looking at, all right, are we going to offer this guy a scholarship or not? Well, let's, let's you know, dig a little deeper in terms of those stats. And then up front of the offensive line, they're going up against a pretty better group here in spring ball. How are they doing? And who are maybe some of the young guys stepping up so far? Yeah, you know, Coach Patterson was just talking about the defensive line and, and uh, you know, Tony Bradford, um, Jalen Hutchins, um, Tyree Wilson, those guys, Nelson and Bannister. I know he's he's been in and out some. Devin Drew, they, they've created a lot of problems. Um, they're very explosive. Um, and, and what we were talking about with the quarterbacks and their experience, these guys on D-line, they have that as well. Um, so they've seen a lot of football. They understand um, blocking schemes. They understand what you're trying to do to them from that standpoint. Um, and, and so they've provided our guys with a big challenge. Um, you know, Caleb Caleb Rogers has, has continued to develop, um, building off of his true freshman season. Um, he's really grown a lot. Um, I think he's a guy that you know, he can play pretty much any position on the line. West and right, um, with, with Dawson being a little bit um, limited this spring, has moved to center. And I think that's going to provide a lot of depth for us there, not only next year, but down the road. Um, and then Josh Berger moving inside, played every game at right tackle, uh, moving inside to right guard, um, getting snaps at center. Um, and so those, those are three guys that have been here. Um, you know, TJ Stormont coming over ha has been a, a big pickup for us. And, and he, he's added some experience to that room as well. So um, they, they've, they've picked up the offense. Um, and the thing about any offensive line is how well do they play together? And, and then so far this spring, they have done that well. Go to Ryan. All right, we should be good this time, Coach. First of all, I was curious, uh, the guys that you know, are getting the ball from the quarterbacks, what have you seen from this receiving core as a whole that you think can be really effective in the Big 12 this season? Well, I noticed the first two practices on most – whatever concepts, pass plays were called, they just dropped back and threw it to easy. So, I know that's pretty good. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, how did you get back there? Oh, well, I'm, I'm just throwing it to easy. Well, that's that, that's a smart decision. So, um, you know, he, he has uh, done a really nice job. He's hungry. He, he, he was all first – Team Big 12 last year, and and he practices like that. Um, he practices with great effort, with great competitive character. He's blocking his tail off, um, and so really encouraged by how he sets the standard in that room um, for the younger guys. Lowick behind him um, is very explosive down the field. Um, Got to continue really with the rest of them, with, with just with ball skills and making catches in traffic. And I think that's ultimately what will separate guys is is we all can make throws and we can all make catches when we're by ourselves. But in in traffic, contested catches, I call them. Courage catches, who can do that? And Trey Cleveland has shown great explosiveness off the ball. Um, Koontz at tight end has, has really um, picked up what we're doing um, and well. He's made a lot of plays. Those guys at tight end are big targets. And I would say that the guys that we have at H, and it's really four guys, um, Sterling Galvan, McLean Mannix, um, Dalton Rigdon, and then Miles Price, um, all of those guys have, have made plays and done things in the slot that are um, very familiar to Texas Tech fans. Um, and, and then I think, you know, at, a, at X as well, you know, with, with J.J. Sparkman and then, and then J.B., I mean, he's done a really nice job as a true freshman. We look like we look a little bit like a basketball team on the perimeter. So um, I think Coach Flani has a rule: if they're not as tall as him, or, or, or then he's not going to recruit them. Which, which I appreciate. Those big targets. We go off that a little bit with Easy. Were there discussions you had about him with the Big Twelve? You know, everyone's looking for that number one guy that can be a first round, second round pick, whatever. Where have you talked with Easy about really progressing his game and becoming that? He's already a you know a great Big Twelve receiver. Where have you discussed him to become you know one of the best, if not the best, in the conference? You know the, the, the conversations of with Easy have just been about within himself and challenging himself on a daily basis uh, in practice and and how he strains his body in practice and and I I've, I've you know shoot man I, I've been very fortunate in my career to be around a lot of really good football players here um, at, at places that I've coached and the one common denominator about all of those players is they love to practice. And they practice their tails off. And I would say he definitely fits the mold of that. He practices really hard. And that means football is really important to you. Go to Leah. Hey, Coach. Taking a look at your running back group right now, just how have you seen them develop since you got here on campus? And where would you like to see them go? You know, Sir Roderick, um, very explosive, very powerful. 
Um, I think he's a, he's a great inside zone runner, um, and, and I think that he has really good vision. I think for his, his development as a running back and in the passing game in terms of his hands, continue to develop his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield and be consistent. Um, Taj Brooks has great patience, has great feet and vision, and, and he's always moving forward with his pads. And, and I think in terms of how can he – improve himself is again is in the passing game you know just in terms of being a route runner and being more of a threat whenever he's out in the passing game and then um, with with uh, with Chad you know he's got you know great top end speed and it's finding what he does really well and doing that and and you know uh, the, the the whole group um, not just the running backs but the offense I mean from a work ethic standpoint, from from showing up every day. It doesn't mean we've had great success every day. And it doesn't mean it gives, all these things give yourself a chance to be successful. But I mean, you talk about guys that really work and, and the guys that are coachable. And, and that's that's really this group. Go to Eric and then Don. I just talked about some of your running backs. Can you see in guys like Xavier and Taj that just the um, experience or the confidence they have having gotten some reps last year because Sir Isaac's kind of been the guy but you know he deal with some injuries and, and guys really got some reps early on in their careers that maybe they wouldn't have other places yeah Xavier White's a, a player that I've seen on film only you know uh, been limited this spring and 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 one of our best uh, most explosive offensive players that I'm really looking forward to to using um, and getting out there and, and just being able to, to, to compete with him. He's he's done everything in the weight room. He's soaking everything up in, in pre-practice. Everything that he can do, X has been doing. Um, and, and I do see, like, you know, with – like I said, experience is an advantage if you use it. And these guys have used it. They're calm. Um, you know, they, they don't get flustered. And then when there are moments of adversity, um, I think they've, they've done a nice job this spring through five practices of stepping up and, and taking the leadership. And there's a lot of talk on the field by the players. And that's what you want. You know, coaches, we're not out there on Saturdays. And, and what I mean by talk, there's encouragement. Um, there's guys trying to pick one another up. We'll finish with Don. Hey, uh, Sonny, how you doing? I'm doing well, Don. It's always good to see you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, an offensive tackle, I assume, with uh, T.J. Storman, obviously you know what he can do, and he comes with a lot of experience and credentials. Uh, what is the other tackle spot uh, likely to look like, do you think? Well, I think Caleb Rogers is the guy that uh, you know jumps off the, the the pages for you at right tackle. Um, he's he's played every position like we talked about minus center. Um, Ethan Card is another guy who's had a really good spring. He's he's uh, gotten his his body in shape. Um, he's moving very well. Um, and then a young and up and coming guy is is Larry Moore. Um, you know he's had you know five really good practices. Um, needs experience. Probably needs to gain continue to gain strength and weight. Um, but those are those are the four guys um, I think that you look at in terms of tackles that you feel like you feel pretty good about. And, and uh, you know, with TJ coming in playing, you know, left tackle, and he's played some right tackle this spring as well, just trying to develop the, the depth there. Um, you know, we've been, we've been pleased with it. And, and I think it's a, it's a position with, with Caleb's versatility um, that I think he's going to get the first crack at it. And, and uh, he's done well so far. Also, the, uh, the depth that tied in, how's that shaping up besides, uh, Besides uh, Travis Coons? Yeah, well, you got John Michael Holcomb from Wellington, who played as a true freshman last year. And, and playing as a true freshman in, at any position in any league is, is very difficult. And he did it at a, at a position at tight end where, um, you know, it's a tough position. You're, you're, you're playing in, in, the, in the trenches with a, a lot of grown men. And uh, he did a really nice job. And he's tough. He's, he's smart. Um, you know, I think on the line and backfield, he's, he's a, a really good blocker. Um, and then behind him, you know, we have our freshmen, um, Mason Tharp, Jed Castles. Both of those guys are learning. Um, very long, very long. Mason's been here, and I think since he's been here, Coach Schultz has put around 20 pounds on him, changed his body. Um, and they're, they're route runners. They're big targets. Um, the blocking part is very foreign to, to some of them just because they haven't done a ton of it with um, out of high school. And then Jason Lloyd. You know, Jason Lloyd's a guy that's been here, and, and we're trying to get him reps with Henry Teeter. And, and then, uh, you know, Teeter's a kid from San Angelo Central. So th there's some depth there. It's just identifying or what, it, what are these guys really good at and, and trying to keep those guys, that in their wheelhouse. But, um, you know, they, they, we ask a lot out of that position and, in terms of what they do, and they've met it. Also, uh, regarding Tyler Shuck, in the 
it's been about a month ago that he committed to you. Uh, what has the process been like in the uh, this month since to kind of get him acclimated, familiarize himself with your playbook and your system and, and those sorts of things? Yeah, it's just been a lot of phone calls. Um, you know, it's really as much as, as the rules would allow in terms of all those things. Um, just a lot of phone calls, communicating that way back and forth. And, and then once he got here and, and we got the green light, um, I don't think you've seen a player that's been at our facility more than he has um, in terms of studying, in terms of watching film, um, in terms of, you know, you have, to almost, you have to run him off the practice field. Um, and so, you know, that's something that, that I, I talked to our guy, you know, once again, all the guys in the room, hey, this guy backed up Justin Herbert for two years. He was the AFC Rookie of the Year this year. He's probably learned that, what he's doing right now, how he works, he probably learned that somewhere. Um, and, and so it's a chance for us to all learn from each other. And, and I think these young guys um, and Henry and, and, and Maverick, um, Parker McNeil, um, Brian Lawson, all those quarterbacks that are in the room to learn um, from Tyler and Tyler can learn from us. But it's been, a, it's been a crash course. I mean, think about the dude just graduated from Oregon. Um, he's in grad school and then he's taking basically grad school football. He, and it, it, it wasn't a deal where we slowed it down for him either. We just. We just threw him on the train and kept going, Don. We didn't slow down for that young man.